on the Terminator, and this is Termination Time. And we're going to go ahead and carry on with more Snowhead Temple in this episode. Hey there guys, this is NDM here, bringing you part 24. No, 20, no, is it 24 or 25? I, I'm not sure, I think it's 25. Of uh, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In the last episode, we came to this oddly looking room here with these weird ass switches. Now basically what you want to do in this room right here is... Uh, well, actually, no, there was one thing that we can do for the first part of this room, and... Well, you can see, if you can't, if you can't see, there's like a little diamond shape here on the roof. Well, it looks like a diamond for some weird reason. And if you shoot an arrow, you can see it's an invisible wall. And I'll show you the difference, look. Yeah, right? I don't know, because you can see like the outline of the of the hole behind the um, invisible wall. Like the outline due to the emulation glitchiness and stuff like that. <laughs> you can actually see the um, out, outer layer of the hole in the wall. Or a hole in the roof. Wait, where's the... What? What? Wait. Where's, where's my stray fairy? Hey, has my stray fairy just done or just run away or something? Or did I kill? What? The crap? Dude, I'm not even kidding. I didn't get that in the last video, and I didn't even get it off. I did not get it off screen. I can swear to you, I did not get it off screen. What the hell? Well, I have six stray fairies. How many did I have become before I came into this room in the last video? I think, well, I've just started recording, I haven't done anything. Uh, what well, happened, I don't know if it's due to the glitchiness or if it's just some random glitch or error. But I'm going to try and shoot and see if it pops anything. Oh wait, it does. What the crap? Alright, okay, let's get our stray fairy mask on and see if it does anything. It should, it should bring down a stray fairy for us. But it's invisible for some weird reason. What? That's crazy, man! What happened to my uh, What the hell happened to my emulator? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's weird. Alright, let's get on our Goron mask. Because this is the next step to this room that we have to do right here. And, um, considering that these switches cannot be placed due, our, due to our normal weight, as a kid, uh, the um, stone pedestal is a bit too uh, heavy for us to actually push down, so we have to turn into a Goron and do our Goron pound. I'm gonna pound those switches with my massive boobs because I'm a Goron and I have big, big, massive rock boobs. Hooray! Well, let's break these boxes, see what's in there. Ah, oh, just magic refills. What the hey, man? I didn't need magic refills, I just needed some arrows. But I'm not running short on those, so I'm doing pretty good. Uh, what do I do next? What is the next thing we do? I think we have to push this switch down. Yeah, this this puzzle can get kind of confusing on which order you have to press the switches down in, but it's really not that hard. And just come to this one right here before the time runs out, not this one down, which will bring the one in the entrance down. And just take your Goron mask off and climb your way up. But you gotta be quick to make sure that you get to the door in time before the time runs out. And it's not that hard. I mean, if you know what you're doing, like, um, well, if you if you can actually make it to the door in time, yeah, that's pretty much your only. That's pretty much the only problem with that puzzle is trying to actually make it to that door in time. Anyway, let's try and get a roll up here. We. Well, actually, my ears aren't hurting so bad, thank god. I've been taking some of that paracetamol, that's actually doing pretty good with my ears. But the last, those weren't the tablets I took last time. I think the tablets I took last time was ibuprofen, and they helped a lot. <laughs> but paracetamol seems to be doing the trick too, and those were, well, those were the tablets the doctors also gave me for my ear. So that's doing pretty good. I mean, I did take my, um, well, I did take my paracetamol for the first time I took my ibuprofen. But then I stopped taking the paracetamol because the ibuprofen was working so well that I didn't really need to take the, um, paracetamol. I guess the paracetamol was like a backup if I ran out of ibuprofen, but I still have some paracetamol left, so I'm okay. Oh my god, what is this thing? Ew, it looks like a goblin. It looks like something that came out of Aladdin. What is this? What is this craziness? Oh, it's a nice. 
Well, yeah, this is a whiz robe. You'll see plenty of these guys throughout the whole entire game. I'm not even kidding. This is the most common mini boss battle in any Zelda game. And I'm not joking. You'll see this guy, like, everywhere. <laughs> in every. Well, not in every dungeon. But you'll see him in the later dungeons. Not in the next dungeon, but in the dungeon after that, which is the last dungeon. And there is also a mini dungeon before the last dungeon, which you'll also see this guy in. But I'm not going to get into that because that spoilers. Ah, oh, I missed your foot! I missed your mother fudging foot. Ah, he's frozen me again. Dude, come your cheers, man. Ah, oh, what the hell? How am I sucking so bad? Wait, turn around. Yeah, you can also use your compass as well, because the red dot on the map indicates where he's going to appear next. So yeah, it's also nice to have the compass with you. Because it really helps in this fight right here. What? It was that quick? No way you dead. What? Well, this is some strange, weird crap going on in this video. First, we start off with a glitchy stray fairy, and then this boss battle goes as quick as the speed of light. Wow, I really didn't expect that mini boss battle to go so freaking quickly. And arrows are the like the are like the weakest way of killing that thing, as well. But the most powerful thing for killing that um, wizard is using the Gora mask, because that seems to get rid of that. Um, was robe a lot faster. Actually, no, I don't think your arrows are the weakest weapon you can use against it. I think your Kakori sword would be the weakest weapon because it's the weakest sword you get. So, anyway, let's try and make this jump. Well, oh, no freaking way! No freaking way did that just happen. Ugh, crap. Well, actually, I have my. Oh, oh no, I'm not going to do those. I'm not going to do those room yet. Room, those, I'm not going to do those rooms yet because we need to come back down here later uh, when we get further up. So, because there's some stuff in that room that I want to clear out. Because there's some stray fairies that I'm missing in there, and that's why I wanted to jump over there. But instead, I managed to miss the jump and fall all the way down here somehow. So I'll meet you all back on the other side of that. Um, on the other side of that platform. So I'll see you all then. Actually, no, wait, never mind. <laughs> I was going to head off to that room just now as I um, cut, but instead I was thinking to myself for a moment, and yeah, I remembered that there is a room here that leads to that room I was meant to be going, that I was heading for, and it's through this door right here. Remember where we got the dungeon map? Well, yeah, that's the room I was heading to, because across that platform is where that door takes you to, is to this room right here, and yeah, um... I completely forgot about these stairway, these staircases, but yeah, it just clicked in my mind, and I was like, "All oh, right, yeah, you can get up in this room by going this way." But how you get into, how you get up to the second floor of this room is that you can see there's um, an ice statue, and there's a frozen ice, a frozen eye uh, thing encoded with the ice behind it, behind the ice statue. And what you gotta do is use your fire arrows and melt that shit away, so then you can actually gain access to the top of this room. Yeah, it's a little shortcut if you end up managing falling off that platform. It's kind of nice that they actually allowed you to do that. So then you didn't have to trace your way all the way around the whole dungeon just to get back to that p friggin' platform if you fell off. <laughs> Which I somewhat happened to uh, do myself. <laughs> Managed to fall off that platform. But yeah, usual ends of truth. You can see that there are these invisible... Now these platforms may seem very intimidating, you know that they're just like one square going up to the top, but really they're not that bad. Link just automatically jumps as soon as you jump onto one, so just try and aim it right, you just get up there no problem. <laughs> there you go, just like that. Oh god, no, don't fall down. Don't fall down there. Uh, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> what the freak? <laughs> oh, dude. Right, so that's our eighth one now. <clears throat> I'm gonna see if I can jump to the other side of this corridor right here. Yeah, uh, there we go. No problem. Now we should, now we should appear on the other side. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're on the other side of that platform where we missed. Yeah. <clears throat> so, all oh right. Okay, there's a. F there's something over there that we need to shoot out with our fire arrows, so I'm going to get rid of that just now. And there we go. Uh, there's one stray fairy in here that's a real pain in the ass to get, and it's that one right over there. 
Now you can see that right, if I put my lens of truth on, you can see an invisible alcove. And if I take the lens of truth off, you can't see it anymore. Now that now that stray ferry is the hard. Well, it isn't that hard, but it's just the, the most. I'd say it's the most tedious one to actually get because you have to get in a deku flower and fly all the way down there. That's pretty much the only way you can actually get to that um, alcove. Is just to go right to the top of the dungeon because there's a deku flower right on top of this dungeon of this room right here on one of the on one of these like s platforms and it's that one right above us there's deku flower up there and you have to fly all the way down to the bottom to that alcove just to get that one straight ferry and you have to wait to actually get down there for you to get into the cave and I don't think we have a key do we? no we don't alright now I know where that key is so we're gonna have to go all the way down to the bottom now. All right, okay, no problem. Let's do a roll. Ow, my legs! I broke my legs. I need a paramedic. 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 Call nine 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 or nine one one. Well, nine 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 is the emergency phone number here, and nine one one is the f emergency phone number in America. And. uh go through these green doors and if you, if you go down the bottom door it is a dead end unless you have the fire arrows because now you can actually gain access from the bottom floor to the top floor because there's a frozen deck you fire down there so if you are to get up to the this room to the top of this room by going down the bottom floor for whatever reason you were down there for I mean I think the only reason you'd be down at the bottom floor for is to get that stray fairy that was in that chest in the fire that's the only reason that I could possibly think that you'd ever want to be down at the bottom. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess if you want to gain access to the top floor, you could go through that uh, way by using the Deku Flower down there. <clears throat> now, this won't be our small key, I don't think. I'm pretty sure it isn't. I think it's a stray fairy, actually. Yeah, it is. I was right. <laughs> So, oh no, it's not this room that has a small key. Why do I think it was this room that had the small key? I don't uh, no, it's not this room. I know which room it does have. I know which room does have the small key in it. It's not this room. It's in fact the room with all those ice statues in that breathe. You know the ice statues that um are breathing across the bridge where you have to roll across as a Goron. It's one of the first rooms you come across. Uh, yeah, it's in that room. So I'm going to have to go back there and get the small key from that room. Because that's the room I was intending on going to, but instead we went the uh, wrong way. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not that much of a walk anyway. So what you... I don't... Yeah, you do have to get rid of these things to actually make the chest appear. So just burn all these out as quick as way. Are you prepared to be warm? Are you prepared to be toasty? Are you prepared to be melted by my awesome power of my fire arrows? Well, get ready because you're about to be engulfed in flame. Burn to the ground. Yes, that's right. Now we have our chest. I need to get my arrows back. And here we go, guys. This is our small key. Alright. You know, I think I'm going to end off the video here and continue on in the next episode. So, in the next episode, we'll be heading off into the top floor to go into that room that was locked that uh, we can't go into because we had to go back all the way down here and get that small key. So, yeah, guys, until then, everybody, um, until then, take care, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you all in my next video. This is Endgame saying thanks for watching, and goodbye.